So first we pray for those among whom the Christ was born, the poor and helpless, the aged and the young people, the cold, the hungry and the homeless, the victims of poverty, injustice and oppression, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved those in despair or the shadow of death. Then as we hear again the message of peace on earth and goodwill among all his people, we pray for the leaders of the nations that all may be inspired to work together for the establishment of justice, freedom and peace the world over. And that we may bear true witness to this hope in a divided world. We pray for the peace and unity of Christ's body, the Church universal, that the whole earth may live to praise his name. Finally, as we rejoice with the saints in heaven and on earth, we remember all those who have gone before us with the sign of faith, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
through whom we offer up our prayers for the coming of his kingdom, and the words he himself has taught us, singing... in the Garden of Eden that the offspring of the woman shall strike the snake's head. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from, he, from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And God said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree from which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The snake deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the snake, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I'll put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. Thanks be to God.
Micah foretells the glory of little Bethlehem. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach the ends of the earth. Thanks be to God. The Lord promises that the king will come to Israel in peace. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Thanks be to God.
promises to faithful Abraham that by his offspring all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of cities of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. Thanks be to God. Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the six months of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this may be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great 
and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. I am the Lord's servant, answered Mary. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Thanks be to God. together she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit because Joseph her husband was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace he had in mind to divorce her quietly but after he had considered this an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said Joseph son of David do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Thanks be to God.
the shepherds go to the manger. And there were shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them. They were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, today the town of David, a Savior, has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths, laying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was laying in the manger. Thanks be to God. Jesus. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose, and we have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, 
report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their tre treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been, been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Thanks be to God. St. John's unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, 
or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. 